Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Let's take a look at a uh, capacitor problem. It's a very simple circuit. We're going to put a, a capacitor in series with a resistor, hook it up to a battery, and we're going to close the switch and let it charge up. And we want to ask some questions about what's going on inside the capacitor. Namely, what is the electric field flux in the capacitor as a function of time? And what is the current through the circuit as a function of time? Okay, so let's think about broadly what, what we think that current is going to look like. Well, if we have a circuit and the switch is open, then current is going to be zero up until we close the switch. So here we are marching along in time. We're at zero current, zero current, and then all of a sudden, we turn on the switch, it jumps up to some maximum level, and then we know what happens, it decays. We know that after a very long time, it has to go back to zero because the capacitor charges up and then it stops, right? It can't move current across it anymore because it's two parallel plates. And we know what this curve looks like, right? This curve has a behavior I is equal to I naught E to the minus T over tau, right? This level here is I naught. Tau is, of course, the decay time for this circuit, and that is given by R times C, okay? Big R means that this thing decays slower. Big capacitor means it decays slower. It takes longer to charge up the capacitor. All right, so this is what the curve for current looks like. So now let's go back to the question. We wanted to figure out what the electric field flux is inside this capacitor, right? What is it through the capacitor? Well, to think about that, we need to do two things. One, we got to understand the circuit here. And if we go back to Kirchhoff's laws, Kirchhoff's laws says, if I go once around the circuit, all the voltage drops have to add up to zero, okay? So let's see what we do. If we start at V, we have potential V. When I go through the resistor, I have a drop of IR. When I go through the capacitor, I have a drop of VC. And then I'm back to zero, okay? I'm back to exactly where I started. So let's just take this equation now and solve it for VC. VC is therefore just V minus IR. Okay, it's whatever voltage you have here minus the current through the resistor. That's what's left over to charge up the capacitor, or, the, or I should say that's the voltage across the capacitor. Okay, what about flux? Well, let's go back to our parallel plate capacitor for a second. What does it look like? It looks like two square plates. Okay, so here is one of the plates. Here's the other plate. And we know what's going on. We have an E field that is pointing down everywhere. If the top plate is positively charged, and the bottom plate is negatively charged. And we know what that E-field strength is, right? That E-field strength is sigma over epsilon naught, right? We solved Gauss's law to figure that out. But sigma is, in fact, Q over A. What is the charge on that top plate? That's what the Q is. There's obviously going to be negative Q on the bottom plate. All right, what is flux? Flux is equal to that electric field times the area. If I figured out how many electric field lines are crossing that area, that's the flux inside the capacitor. Okay, well that looks pretty good because if I multiply E by A, I'm going to get rid of that A. Let's just plug it all in. We have E, which is Q over A and then we're still dividing by epsilon naught, and then we're going to multiply by A, and so we just end up with Q over epsilon naught. 
Now, we don't really know what Q is yet, but we remember that a capacitor is related to how much charge is on it and the voltage across it by this relationship right here. Q equals CV. The voltage across the capacitor multiplied by its capacitance, that tells you how much charge is on it. All right, so we can put that in right here. We've got C times VC over epsilon naught. But VC is this thing right here. So this becomes C over epsilon naught times V minus IR. But I is given by this thing right here. So what does this all become? We get C over epsilon naught times V minus I naught E to the minus T over tau. And then we got to multiply that stuff by R. So now this is the flux through the capacitor as a function of time. Let's look at two extremes, okay? What is the flux at t equals zero? And flux we usually uh, write as a phi, we'll call it phi sub e for electric field. What is the electric field flux at t equals zero? Well, we just plug in, eh, let me erase this properly. We just plug in t equals zero to this equation. And if I plug in t equals zero, what is e to the zero? It is one. And so I just get the flux at t equals zero is equal to C over epsilon naught times V minus I naught R. Okay, what about at very long times? As time increases and we go to infinity, what is the flux? If I put in t equals infinity there, e to the minus infinity is equal to zero. And so we just get c over epsilon naught times v. All that other stuff goes away. Okay? That's pretty cool. Now, all right, if you want to calculate the current as a function of time, we showed you how to do it right here, right? I is equal to I naught e to the minus t over tau. So if you, for instance, want the current at some time t1, you just have to plug t1 into that equation. But we need to know what I naught is. What is the maximum current? Well, the maximum current is when you first close the switch. And when you first close the switch, the capacitor hasn't had a chance to charge up yet. And so all the current is dropping across the resistor. And so the maximum current, I naught, is in fact just V over R. Just Ohm's law. It's like the capacitor isn't even there yet. Okay? This is the maximum current, I naught. And now, if we go back to our flux calculation and you look at this result right here, wait a minute, V is equal to I naught R. So what's the flux through the capacitor at T equals zero? It's zero. All right, hopefully that's clear. Uh, if not, come see me in office hours. Cheers.